Good evening and welcome to St Andrew's time of evening prayer. It's good to be able to spend this time together to refocus and for us to be able to pray together even though we're apart. And some opening words from Deuteronomy. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And let's pause for a short time to think about the day that we've had. And let's give those things to God that have worried us, upset us and overwhelmed us. And let's give God too the thanks for the blessings. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Our first reading tonight is Psalm 87, and I'll read it. He has set his foundations on the holy mountain. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. I will record Rahab and Babylon among those who acknowledge me, Philistia too and Tyra, along with Cush, and will say, This is the one who was born in Zion. Indeed, of Zion it will be said, This one and that one were born here, sorry, were born in her, and the Most High himself will establish her. The Lord will write in the register of the peoples, This one was born in Zion. As they make music, they will sing, All my fountains are in you. And let us join with the people mentioned in this psalm and praise God for the glorious city of Zion, where our names are written down, and praise him that no one can remove our names from God's book of life. Let's say together the glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And our second reading is from Acts, and it's Acts chapter 11, verses 19 to 26. And this reading is, is entitled, The Church in Anti Antioch. Now those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen travelled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch, telling the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the, about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people be believed and turned to the Lord. News reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad, and he encouraged them to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he'd found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the, with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Can you imagine what it was like? Saul, your worst enemy, he wanted you dead. He spoke out about against your beliefs in the city square and he would have led stonings of your friends and leaders. He was hatred. And then things changed. He changed. Once completely opposed to your teachings, he was now learning and teaching among your people. He was living with your friends. He'd given up his former way of life. Was it possible? Was it a trick? People don't just change like that, do they? Well, this is the story of Paul and Barnabas. Paul, once an enemy of the church, he was converted by a vision of the risen Christ. 
and this is the power of the gospel. It changed the hearts of the people in Antioch before Paul and Barnabas even arrived there. It changed the heart of Paul to become a minister of the gospel rather than being completely against it. And it changed the heart of Barnabas to accept his one-time enemy as a brother. And today that same gospel changes our hearts and minds as we seek to forgive, accept and willingly serve God and to prayer in response. Heavenly Father, change our hearts. Turn us from selfish worrying and pride, from sins of habit and sins of choice. Turn us towards you, towards your church and our neighbours. Help us to live for you and for others rather than ourselves. Give us the strength to do this, Lord. Amen. And our third reading tonight is from John. And this one is from John chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. And this passage is entitled, The Unbelief of the Jews. Then came the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered round him saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe. You do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This passage in the Gospel of John tells us that apart from his disciples, people did not know who Jesus was. They didn't know he was the Son of God. His only believers at this point were his faithful disciple, disciples. And to them, he demonstrated who he was through his actions and through his good deeds. And just as Jesus' disciples followed him and believed him with faith, today we too have faith in order to believe. We have faith in who Jesus is and confidence in his words and his actions. And we stay faithful through our answers to prayer and by seeking to hear his voice. Let's respond to both of those readings with the words of the warrior again. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now we come to a time of prayer. I'm going to lead us in a prayer, and then um, add some prayer suggestions if you want, or use your own. So let us pray. First, I'll read the prayer for today. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we pray for those we know who are ill, remembering those in our care homes. I want to pray for two friends of mine who've, who are recovering with, from COVID-19 and thank you God for answered prayer. We pray for those who are struggling financially and who may risk an uncertain future regarding their employment. And we pray for people who are waiting for government aid. We pray for those who are anxious, lonely, sad, overwhelmed. We thank you for and pray for those who are working on the front line and our key workers, whatever their role. We 
give thanks for those people who keep us going and cheer our days. And for those people who show acts of kindness. We pray for our leaders in whatever capacity they're leading and for decisions that they need to make. And we thank you, Lord, for our blessings and our answers to prayer. And the collect for today. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please do join me in saying the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So we come to the time, end of our time together this evening and thank you for joining us. So we conclude. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you, O Lord and Lord, make us dwell in safety. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. And whatever you're doing this evening, I pray that you feel God's love and peace and joy with you. God bless and thank you for joining us. Good night. <laughs>